So the reaction quotient, as we've just done, to find the reaction quotient for any particular system, you substitute the current concentrations of reactants and products, whatever they are, whether or not you're at equilibrium, into the equilibrium expression and you evaluate it. And you can use this value, Q, um, it's a measure of the reactant or product concentrations when the system is not at equilibrium. And by comparing Q with KSP or KEQ or whatever type of equilibrium constant you're using, you can tell which way the equilibrium is going to shift. So if Q is greater than KSP, and this is the situation that we just had. So let me just rewrite. We had, um, we had KSP was the concentration of silver times the concentration of chloride, and the value of that was 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10. When we evaluated Q, it was 0.02 times 24, which gave us 0.08. So in our case, Q is greater than KSP. What this means, the, the uh, significance of this is, if Q is greater than KSP, it means that the concentration of our products, the dissolved ions, must be too high. So to get to equilibrium, you need to reduce the amount of products. And the way that this particular system can do that well, if, if any Q is greater than KSP, the way that the system can uh, get back to KSP is by shifting to the left, by more of the reverse reaction happening, using up some of the products, therefore lowering the value of Q until it gets to, uh, to equal KSP or KEQ. The other possible situation is that Q is less than KSP. And for this to happen, it must mean that there is uh, too little products. So the concentration of products is too low, and that's giving you a value lower than KSP. If this is the case, the way that the system gets to equilibrium is by producing more products until uh, it gets to equilibrium, until those concentrations multiply to give KSP. We call this shifting to the right. Okay, so. More of the reverse reaction means shifting to the left, and more of the forward reaction is shifting to the right. 